Welcome back to another issue of Kaspersky Labs Lab Matters. I'm your host, Paul Roberts. I'm an editor at ThreatPost.com and a security evangelist at Kaspersky Lab. I'm here today with Kurt Baumgartner, who's a senior security researcher here at Kaspersky. Kurt's going to be talking with us about some of the threat trends that we saw in 2010 and also what's coming up for us in 2011. Kurt, welcome. Thank you, Paul. So we're just past the new year. It's February, and uh, you know, probably a good opportunity to look back at the last 12 months and uh, say what what were some of the big trends that we saw emerge in the security space and the security threat landscape uh, last year. Well, uh, 2010 was definitely a busy year for uh, software security and infosec in general. Um, some of the biggest trends we saw, which were rather interesting, were uh, the major increase in web. Uh, web attacks and web-related issues, mm -hmm. um, whether that's receiving a targeted email, uh, someone trying to fish your Facebook account, uh, that sort of thing. There was a major increase in web-based attacks. Um, some of the other trends we saw had to do with sort of where the malware is coming from and where it's being hosted. It was interesting that the shift happened where the U.S. is hosting the most malware, malware in the world, followed by Russia and then finally China. And it's interesting to know that China made some very strict and rigid regulations in creating domains in China, which we haven't seen in the U.S. And that's important. Why? Well, uh, when some of the some of the technologies are being implemented, some of it is focused on sort of identifying software coming from a certain region. Right. So if if you receive an email and it's a .com address, you're still at risk. It's not just .cn or something hosted in China anymore. Right. And um, more, more threats coming over the web because is that, that's really where computing is going. That's where people are, are, are doing their business, right? Right. More and more malware uh, and more and more, well, legitimate activity is moving into the cloud. And right. a lot more work is being done online. Um, so. Well, and in turn, a lot of the techniques for attacking and stealing data that is being generated online is, are being refined. Mm -hmm. As we look ahead to the next 12 months, 2011, um, which, of these, which, which of these trends do you see continuing and what might we expect that, that maybe we haven't seen too much of yet? Yeah, some of the interesting things about what we're forecasting or speculating about 2011 uh, it can be summed up in two words, steal everything. Uh, what we're seeing is a, a definite increase in client-side attacks, this web sort of thing, and being able to spoof other identities mm -hmm. and sort of create this trust in how the malware is being delivered. Okay. Um, there are much more professional and organized groups doing this, and we expect that a lot more of this data is going to be stolen and warehoused so it can be traded and exchanged uh, and, and in turn monetized by these guys. So in other words, not just financial data, but, uh, but really any personal identifi data or identifying information. That's right. And so in the past for immediate financial gain, mm -hmm. uh, these guys would buy and sell your mother's maiden name, mm -hmm. your date of birth, that, the, the sort of things that go with credit cards. Um, now we expect to see more about who you connect with what you're interested in, your color, the color of your eyes, the color of your hair, other identifying information, and a lot of behavioral information. Uh, now that Android is out and Android is being targeted more and more and the popularity of Android is going out, uh, even your location can be tracked now. And why is that useful? What, what would they do with that type of data? Well, the, my hair and eyes are brown, you know. <laughs> so, so what? You know, one one of the things we don't like doing is spreading ideas about how to mm -hmm. monetize these sorts of things. But the there's so much you can do with someone else's identity, uh, and being able to sort of spoof and um, and become someone else mm -hmm. becomes more and more valuable, depending on who you're targeting and how. You mentioned Android. Um, seems like the security community has been talking about you know the coming wave of mobile malware or mobile threats for almost a decade now. But we are actually starting to see some pickup in that space. Could you speak to what we should expect from mobile malware and mobile threats? Yeah. Well, in 2010, you know, we saw the popular popularity of Android booming. Mm -hmm. So. Around mid-2010, we saw a pretty intense focus on exploit development. In other words, getting 
stuff onto people's Android without them knowing. Mm -hmm. um, so there was a lot of effort in that direction and we expect to see a lot more of that. At, towards the end of the year, in China especially, we saw um, that users were um, sideloading applications or going to other places than the market. And by doing that, when they were sideloading these apps, they were installing spyware. Okay. So now there's, uh, uh, we're seeing more and more effort towards pulling uh, details, culling details of individuals off of I Android in particular. Um, there's also been, um, in 2010, there's also been a bit of activity as far as the iPhone goes and trying to get malware up into the iStore and delivering that to users. Uh, so th there's been a good mix. What can people who are maybe iPhone or Android users do? I mean, is, this, is it to the level where they really need to be concerned about random malware attacks or is this really for people who are engaged in you know kind of high risk mobile activities we're we're starting to get to the point where we, even with android uh if you're doing things like side loading or loading outside of the market or even if you're just using the market you're exposing yourself to risk so, so loading really any third party application and definitely if you're going outside of the android marketplace or the app, uh, app store on itunes that's right right you're, you're, you've got increased risk there to malware. And, and, towards, and what can it do? It's on your phone. What, what, what data can it, can it get access to that, that might be interesting? Well, there's all sorts of things you can have on your phone. So, for example, uh, your, your contact list. This is pretty common to, to gather. There's, there's all sorts of other data, photos that come with the con contact list, uh, your location, um, what time of day you are, where you are. Mm -hmm. um, and then there's so many applications that... Uh, store sort of um, information about where you're shopping, so uh, where, how much how much coffee you drink, that sort of thing. Uh, it, what, it, what time of day you're purchasing that? What where you are and and what you're doing? So it's really a a whole picture of you and your your economic activity as well as your potentially your social activity and and what you're doing. Yeah, it's a pretty complete portrait of who you are. Anything, uh, anything else that uh, folks should be watching out for in 2011? We talked about web threats. We talked about mobile. Uh, we talked about social networking. Yeah, the, it really what it comes down to, our, our, our focus for 2011 will be on spyware. Mm -hmm. A whole new generation of spyware and a whole new generation of malware writers that are writing things we've never seen before. It, it, they're getting more and more sophisticated, more and more professional. And the organizers and exchanges uh, behind those guys that are monetizing the data sort of criminal networks that support all this. Yep. Right. Hey, Kurt, thanks so much for coming by and, and talking to uh, Lab Matters, and we, uh, we're looking forward to talking to you again soon. Great. All right. Thanks, Paul. Thanks very much for joining us here on Lab Matters. If you are interested in seeing any of the episodes that we've recorded, you can do so online. Go to www.youtube.com slash securelist, and you can download and view the Lab Matters episodes there. Thanks very much. I'm your host, Paul, and look forward to seeing you again soon. Oh, 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 oh,